What's up, folks? Welcome to Frankit's first formative video. In this video, we will learn the different type of brake calipers that exist, as well as their components and operations. Within the braking system, the caliper are the ones at the end of the circuit whose functions are to slow down and stop the vehicle. How it is possible? Very simple. When step on the brake pedal, the brake pump distributes the liquid through the circuit to each of the vehicle's brake caliper. Being the bleeder closed, the fluid enters through the hose intel port, making that the brake piston move the brake pads by tightening the brake disc like this. To do this, there are two types of brake caliper, fixed and floating, being the floating one with or without mechanism for the handbrake. The difference is that in fixed piston, the face-to-face -face pistons come out at the same time and the brake pads tighten the disc at the same time. While in floating ones, when the pistons along with the brake pads on this side touches the disc, the body of the caliper moves until the other brake pad presses on the other side of the disc. Thereafter, both brake pads tighten at once. The fixed ones are attached to the vehicle chassis with screws over here and in the floating ones are attached over here by the caliper support. All of them work with the hydraulic system that we have explained. However, the floating brace caliper with mechanism also work with mechanical system to be able to perform parking braking. In other words, when we operate the handbrake, a metal tow line pulls this lever and thanks to the internal mechanism of the caliper, and piston moves to tighten the brake disc. This type of caliper is usually placed on the rear wheel. The components of a floating brake caliper without mechanism are very similar to this. The difference is that we will not find the elements that encompass the manual brake system. Here is an example of a Hyundai Santa Fe or a Kia Sorento. Then we will disassemble this floating caliper with mechanism of a Volkswagen Polo 9N or Series 4. And this fixed caliper from a Volvo S60 to show you all the components and their utilities. To begin the disassemble of the floating caliper, we see how the brake pads are placed. Then we find the guide pins. They are responsible for making the floating body of the caliper slide relative to the fixed support and as you can see come two of them. It is very important that they are well impregnated with guide grease so that their life is longer and they are not malfunctions. These rubber components are the guide pin boot whose function is to prevent dirt or water from entering the caliper where the guides are located. If this component fail, the guide may rust or damage and impair the proper function of the caliper. Become unblocked. Some guide pin boots have a metal insert for fixing either on the caliper body or in the holder. Next, we see this element right here, the brake pad accessories. They slip the brake pads and keep them in the operating position. If they were in a poor condition or poor greases, it could cause the brake pads to make noise or even not move properly. This way, the caliper support is free of any component. We release the lever and tug line holder to keep watching the different elements. These two components allow internal components to be operated. 
There are several types of actuators, although this is one of the most common. This handbrake retainer prevents the mechanism from getting dirty, that is, it acts as a dust cover but from the handbrake. To analyze the inside of the piston, we need to remove it from the caliper. As the piston is attached to the internal mechanism, Frankit uses the piston repositioner case, a tool with a clear advantage. It adapts to any type of caliper with mechanism. In one hand we have the piston and in the other we have the caliper boot, which function is the same as the guide pin boots. These boots can also have a metal insert or even a retaining ring. Here we have the piston which, as you can see, has several internal components. We remember that only brake calipers with handbrake mechanisms have internal components. And there is also a great variety. Here's an example. Usually, those that do not have internal components are simpler, since they have nothing inside. Going back to the caliper, we came across caliper seal, a very important component as it ensures that there are no brake fluid leaks and helps the piston go back and return to its starting position. If this component is damaged or deteriorate, it may cause the caliper to malfunction. This piece right here is called a pergy or bleeder along with the cap. When the caliper is installed in the chassis and the hydraulic system is connected, it is necessary to remove any air that may have stayed inside the system. This process is called purging. That is when the purge came into play. Opening it up a little bit and stepping on the brake pedal, we managed to get the air out of the circuit. It is turn of the internal component of the caliper. Like piston components, there are a wide variety of them. With the help of these long circlip pliers, you can extract the retaining ring. It is a metallic component, also known as an elastic ring, that keeps the mechanism secure inside the caliper body. Here we have the mechanism, responsible for transmitting the turning force of the lever to the piston thanks to metal balls. If you look carefully, we can find an O-shaped joint in this stem. This prevents the brake fluid from leaking through the back of the body. We will only have this handbrake retainer, which acts as a caliper boot but for the handbrake lever. These are the components that make up this caliper. In the fixed caliper, we do not have any moving part. This is particularly a type of caliper of pin pads, also existing with central strap and central bridge. The difference lies in the structure of the caliper. The first thing we find here are the brake pad accessories hooked with these pins. This sheet metal keeps the brake pads in position and, because of the design it has, helps the brake pads to retreat.
To show you the pistons, we will use prestated air and in this way the aluminum piston will come out. As you can see, this caliper consists of four face-to-face -face pistons. The brake fluid is distributed inside the caliper, reaching its cavity by doing the same pressure on each piston. Those that are monobloc usually have an outer duct through which the liquid is distributed. Also, we will take off the caliper boot, which protects from dirt and particles. In some caliper, the caliper boots contain a metal insert or contains a retaining metal ring that ties the rubber to fit on the caliper. In this caliper, we also find the well-known purger, which thanks to them, we can purge the air from its proper operation. It is time to separate both parts of the caliper. Once the screws and washers are removed, we can understand a little better how the fluid is distributed. After entering through the input port, it reaches these two cavities, where the pistons are located. To move on on the second part of the caliper, does it through this hole here. That is why we have this rubber element being sealed between both parts. Finally, it reaches the other two remaining cavities. Last but not least, we will have the four caliper joints left, which prevents leaks and help to push back the piston. These are all components that encompass this fixed caliber. Thank you all very much. We hope that it has been useful to you and you have understood a little better how the brake caliper of your vehicle is composed. We will do more content like that, so do not hesitate to subscribe and if you have any question, ask it in the comments or contact us through the website.